Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stardom Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. Uh, right over here, it's the gothic princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? I am clearly confused because I definitely went for the gothic look and then decided heart buns are the way to go because, you know, she's well, confused. I was thinking they could be like it's two ends of like a, like a bone almost like coming out like, like you have like a bones crust in the back of your head. I don't know. It could be that. I had one of my lovely girlfriends when I showed it to them. I was like, "Look, this is cute." And she goes, "You look like Shrek." I was like, "That's phenomenal." That's Thanks, just bitch. mean. I was thinking like there's two crossbones back there, and that this is the end of the bones crossing. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. Sure. Like a pirate, we'll like that. pirate, like the pirate with the head and the, cro the crossbones of the poison symbol with the cross. But not like red beard. Who? Exactly. I've already blocked him out of my mind. <laughs> exactly. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing pretty darn good. Uh, tired. Don't sleep well on on Monday nights, and we're recording this on Tuesday, so. For a long, long day. So working back to work today, and you know, just just tired, just tired. I feel that after getting sick last week and having to deal with uh, with my throat just not feeling so awesome, I relate. I didn't sleep very well either. Yeah. So we are back with some stardom review. I know it's been a while, ladies and gentlemen, since we've covered Japanese or some content here in Andre Melbourne's top, but we did take a little bit of a hiatus there other than the chop talk to cover the local stuff we were doing. We were just taking a little bit of hiatus uh, from just our Japanese coverage because we both burn out and uh, just stuff was going on in both of our lives. So, But we're back. We're here to talk some stardom. We're here to talk to Stardom uh, Namba Grand Fight. I think it was Grand Fight, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, the Stardom Namba Grand Fight uh, that happened on the September... What was it? What was the date on... Yeah. September 14th. That's the date. That's the ticket. I'm noticing that asking you about things about the show are not going the way it usually goes. <laughs> well, oh, I missed. I completely missed. I this. completely missed something on this show that I'm. I regret yeah, now. I, I, I watched it. Don't worry about watched... it. And then it was just like, what happened? And I was like, bruh. I went and watched it. We're all good. We're all good. I went and watched it. Yeah, yeah. I bet you did. Well, I watched the video quickly, and it was done in like twenty seconds. So we're all good. I mean, you must have watched it a little fast. It was a little bit more than that, but but it was a fun little segment. But yes, yes. We, had a lot, we have a there's a lot of confusion with this one, but a lot of fun with this one as well. Yes, but before we start talking stardom now, but grand fight, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining us here on Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk, or on Backbreaker Video, or on our new home A Plus Productions, where you've got us in audio form. Like do this, be like. Mm. Yeah, I'm not. I don't have the parts required. <laughs> I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can watch. You all listen, listen to us on A Plus Productions, A Plus Productions dot com, or A Plus Productions on Facebook to get us in audio form and a lot of other great content over there. Me and Mel just appeared on the Sunday show, the Sunday flagship show where we sat down for the uh, weekly uh, round table where we hung out with Matt Edder and, Bor and uh, Boris Roberto Aguilar as we chatted all things professional wrestling from the United mm -hmm. States over to Japan. We talked some DDT in there, which was interesting. Mel, Mel and Boris really got into the DDT love there. So, I mean, as we said, you haven't lived until you see Chris Brooks in a blindfold bra match. Very, very yeah. much so. <laughs> I haven't watched the full <laughs> match, but I've watched a bunch of highlights of it, and it's it's grand. Let's just say that. Did you see the more recent one that I sent you with him and Mao? Yes, yes. That was hilarious. <laughs> Where he flashes Mao. <laughs> Spits oh, out so with the beer in his mouth. Yeah. Such I mean, good. fair. What that's what happens when someone flashes you their big old biddies, I guess. Sure, those big old biddies. 
from Chris Brooks. <laughs> Chris Brooks, that tall, lanky, Zack Sabre Jr. looking man. He's yes. The emo version of Zack Sabre Jr. So I just want to say thank y'all to everybody. Uh, please, if you're listening to us in audio form or you want to listen to us in audio form, fplusproductions.com, please like us over there on your podcast schedule. choice. You can subscribe to us over there and support us by joining the Facebook page. And I want, and if you are watching on our YouTube channels, whether it's Backburger Video, Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk, thank you so hit my mic. Thank you so very much. Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to sell, share us up to your friends, family, and to the people that fall into ditches. And don't forget to hit, uh, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. How would you share the video with me? I'm in it. What? I would probably fall into a ditch. <laughs> you would. I would. But other people have fallen ditches. It's, it's, come on. It's more, more people than just you fall in ditches. Come on. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not the only klutz on the planet. That's very true. <laughs> so we're going to get into it uh, six and a half minutes into the show. We're going to get to talk some stardom. We're going to talk the uh, stardom uh, Namba Grand fight. So let's get into it. It's happened on September 14th, and it kicked off on the pre-show, which I'd match it. And the match I did not watch because I only watched from the main card start forward. So I I know the finish. It is Zena taking on Rian. And Zena beats Rian with a German suplex. And then they did a, a promo or did their uh interview in the back together after the match. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't I also didn't see this this match but i just see clips of it mm. and um yeah Z, yeah it went exactly as we expected mm. <laughs> rian gets her heat you know, spots uh, fire girl, yeah yeah rian fires up gets her heat spots but Zena comes back beats her the hell down hits her with the german and gets a win yeah pretty much pretty much pretty, 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 <laughs> much, pretty much great way to get the crowd fired up though because rian is kind of starting to She's been doing the, the young lioness thing, if you will, for a little bit. And I guess we have to come up with another name for that. The Twinkling we? Stars. The Twinkling Stars. Let's star. go with Starlet. Starlet sounds way less weird. Um, she's a young Starlet and, and has been for a little bit. She's very, very young, working very, very hard. Um, stop laughing. I thought, you said, appropriate I thought you said Scarlet. Scarlet. I mean, I was so confused. I mean, <laughs> a young goals, star child. Right? She's a young star child. I don't know. I don't feel like isn't that what Volador Junior's nickname is? I don't know. I don't watch Volador Junior. I don't watch. Lucha. Well, you should. Um, any who's else? Moving on from this, this was a, a fun little match again. Rian is like I, I've been trying to say. She is young. She's just getting started. We're still very, very talented uh, wrestler. I would compare her to a young Rana Yagami when Yagami first started um, before joining God's Eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I really have been impressed with R- Rian. I didn't get it. I'm watching a lot mm-hmm. from her from this match. But everything I have watched her in lately, that uh, was, she's in a three way with Saya and Mina. On the September mm. 8th show, she showed such great fire while getting her ass beat. Especially she taking mm-hmm. the kick from Mina and the strikes and the strikes and chops from Ida. She showed such great fire. And I'm really impressed mm-hmm. with this girl. And then Zena, I find she's just getting better and better every time. And she's get, uh, getting that lucha influence uh, from working with a uh, certain lucha guy over in Noah. Uh, and it's really paying off in her style. Oh, yeah. I was like, hmm, buffering, dial tone. Math equations happening. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you're Charlie Day with the board trying to figure it all out. <laughs> and and she is not even close. <laughs> you, you, at least you figured it out. Uh, well, yeah. I did. Yeah, I did come to a conclusion, didn't I? You did. Gold star, Melball. Yay, Melball gets a gold star. <laughs> but I think maybe it should be a bronze star for that one. Thank you. 
Fuck you, bronze. That's a really a gold star performance, though. Rude. <laughs> if I called anything, that is a gold star. That is a platinum star. That is a diamond star. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta lower your ex. You gotta, you're, you're, getting, you're, you're getting too good now, so I gotta like it, mm -mm. it's now get those stars is getting mm -mm. higher. No, no I earned that ish. Don't even, don't even. Yeah, but the I new, that there's, gonna be, there's gonna be a new stage coming soon that you're gonna go. You're 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 gonna go out a beginner into uh, uh, lower no. intermediate. No. Yeah, no. you're gonna move it up. You have no, no. You haven't upped the difficulty on Andreas's side quests. You're not no, upping you're, the difficulty. You're in charge of his stars. side quests. No, you're in charge of his side quests. I'm in charge. You're not of in yours. charge of mine, bro. We're getting wildly off topic. Take us into the first match, Mofo. Uh, the, the second match, first match. Oh, and Zina gets a win, so she raised her hand. Such a nice outfit. <laughs> uh, Mina Shirakawa. Uh, versus Saya Kamatani, your current uh, undisputed British uh, women's champion over in Rev Pro, Mina Shirakawa, <laughs> taking on the new, the newest member of Hate, Saya Kamatani. Uh, Kamatani doing the thing where she's rolling out to avoid Mina, and when Mina rolls out, she rolls back in. Uh, but Mina outsmarts her a little bit, which she goes to out, but fakes going out as Saya Kamatani rolls in and hits her with a pretty nice little bulldog there. Mm hmm. Uh. Mm hmm. You know, Kamatani gets a chair and just, just sits in it and just like goading Mina and she ends up drop toe holding Mina into the chair when she ran at her. Um, the point where she had Mina in the ropes and she just act kicks her right in the back of the head, just that up bang, great. Oh, look, just when she's through the ropes, it looked just brutal. Wasn't that a little foreboding? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mina c comes back at one point with an Enza Gray goes to work attacking the knee of Kamatani. Uh, Mina has this great disaster kick, which is like springboard, the springboard kick off of the off the second rope. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hanare does it, so does Cody Rhodes. Uh, but she only gets two out of that. Uh, Kamatani with a huge second rope drop kick for two at one point, then falls in with a northern light suplex for two. Uh, Mina reverses a suplex attempt into a small package for two, then hits a beautiful dragon screw. Kamatani rolls her up for two, then Mina hits a spinning back fist, applies the figure four, but Kamatani, showing her little hate tactics here, grabs the ref and throws the ref into Mina Shirakawa to break up the pin, which takes the ref out for a little bit. Um mm -hmm. Mina unloading with a combination of strikes. It's a jumping spin kick. She falls with an implant DDT for two. Uh, Kamatani reverses the glamorous driver Mina into the backslide and then gets her feet up on the ropes for the leverage and the win. That was very close in the line of sight to the ref, too, which yeah. kind of disappointed me. Yeah, I was very um, mad at the ref for that one. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, and this is usually the good ref, too. Hmm. The older guy. He's usually really, really good about that. It was very stewish um, of him. It was. It was. Um, I did the Mina dance as soon every time I hear it. I was eating. I almost choked. It was still glorious. Um, there's that little. I, I didn't know what to call that. it. Who hmm? see that you? jumping up trying to do it while you're eating and like ah, ah, choking while you're oh, dancing. Oh yeah, I had a yeah, mouthful of meat. Um there's that like I don't remember what it's called, but it's like that little surfboard thing that Mina tries to do, the half surfboard where she locks up the knees but instead of actually pulling into the surfboard, she just kind of stomps your knees into the ground. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's Me really too. cool cuz it it sets up something like you think she's going to do one thing and she ends up doing another. Mm -hmm. um, and it does really soften up those knees for her figure four. Um, we see Kanemaru also do it as well when he's setting up for the figure four. So I like the little, the little nods. Um, yeah, again, the foot of the ropes was kind of annoying. Mm. Um, but at the same time, what else do we expect out of a heel fiction? True. These were um, palatable shenanigans, too. Mm -hmm. Again, I always have to point that out. This is always something done very, very well. There's interference, and it's to 
it, it's not to an annoying point though with this show because there were so many hate matches on it i did start to get a little aggravated with it by the last one um well that, that was the one where i had the least problem with <laughs> well i think it was because at that point in time i was just like the second one was really hard for me mm -hmm. so by the time the third one came i expected the same thing going into it it wasn't as terrible as the second in regards to the shenanigans but there was still a lot of shenanigans um that is becoming very synonymous with hate i don't have a problem with it though because it's done right it's done very very well it's not house of torture that's their hate of torture yeah well let's have a discussion about it sometime maybe we can like discuss a little bit more in depth the the co like connection that. between house of torture and hate and maybe how how, why it is that we hate House of Torture so much? Because they are pretty much doing the same thing. It's just what about the hate is doing it better and less they're, aggravatingly? We'll have to search that and figure that out. They're just better. Simply, simple as that. They're just is it that they're women, the whole... though? No, it's just or that they're it's... better. They're just better at what they do. That's simply what it is. There's nothing they would be Because they are pretty much doing the same thing, though. But yeah, like as I've mentioned before, show shows facial expressions really bring down the quality of his work. So, uh, also, I don't know. Well, this, is again, we'll have to this is one of the few <clears throat> times I'll say, Hey, Gato, talk listen to Taro Okada. We don't mm, one of the few times I'll say that. No, He's don't booked. don't listen to him. No, that would still be a poor choice. Just watch the product that you're partnered with. It's true. Just just watch the product. Then that could be said for anybody doing anything or any kind of planning or production or booking of anything. Watch the fucking product. Yep. Know what you're doing. Really simple. It is very simple. It is very mm -hmm. simple. We move on to a tag team match. It is Gazai <laughs> versus EXV. It is uh, Gazai's Hina and Rana Yamagi versus Empress Nexus Venus, Hanako, and Waka Shikiyama. Uh, Waka rides Hanako sh on Hanako's shoulders to the ring. I love, I love their little tag entrance together. I really do enjoy the little bit there. Um, Hanako, I do as well. Also, Waka's outfit. Perfection. Oh, and Hannah goes too. Perfection. Well, that's what I'm saying. They matched. They were different colors because Waka was silver and Hanako was this it's beautiful. It it looked silver on the oh, entrance mm -hmm. ramp to me. Like I'm trusting you with color and things, sir. Especially on this show. <laughs> um, but Hanako was wearing this beautiful blue silver thing the strappy straps the, the the styling of the gear was very similar but different enough that they had their own personalities in it i absolutely loved it yeah uh, i was a big fan of it. and then uh, rana's gear is just that new yellow and black gear that she had she's been had it for a little bit now but god that mm -hmm. just looks so smooth um, the same I thing love... I say with uh, with uh, Empress Nexus Venus, I say with God's Eye. They're very much looking very united. This is something that Stardom is doing very, very well with its factions. Yeah. And then uh, Hanako doing a very Rhea Ripley-esque pose during her uh, announcement in the ring. She came in and did the Rhea Ripley stomp and, like in, mm -hmm. in, in the ring. I was like, yeah. It was a nice yes. idea. Yeah, I was like, that's that's great. She she I'm like she's a Rhea Ripley fan. She's a Rhea mm -hmm. Ripley fan. Um, mm -hmm. my first note for the match is man, Rena has dim kicks. Oh boy, does she ever? Oh, crap, they keep oh, getting better. Right. Each show yeah. that I see with her, because um, I mentioned to you earlier, I saw a match with it was Rana. I think it was Mina and also Saida, and the three of them also tore it up. 
And Rana was keeping up with those girls, no problem. We know that Mina has some killer kicks. Rana was giving it right back to her. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Waka getting her Waka weapons on to Rana. But as she goes to the corner, she gets drop kicked in the corner. And Rana falls over with another drop kick in the center of the ring. <laughs> um, Hito in just judo tossing Waka and Hanako all around the ring. A um, little bit later, Hanako... I uh, guess a huge lift into like picks just cradles uh, Hina up and then just drops her into the sick looking backbreaker over her knee that falls mm -hmm. up that jumping knee drop for two. Just such so smooth there. Mm -hmm. um, Hina comes back with a running neck break, breaker <laughs> that falls it up, but they pump handle Urinagi for two. Mm -hmm. Um, Hanako hits a suplex for two, then soup, then picks up Waka and suplexes Waka onto Rena or onto Hina, 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 not Rena, Hina. It's, it's confusing. Too many Enos in this. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. Uh, onto Hina, but she can, uh, but then Hanako only gets two. Uh, Waka catches, uh, Hina in the ropes, hits Oblivion. Um, and then Hanako hits a big boot that picks her up into the Argentine backbreaker into her finisher, the JP coaster, and then picks her up and chokes her out with the sheerest or chokes her with the sheerest soggy. And she gets the submission win when Hina is forced to tap. Where's Nexus Venus got a win. Ah. And Waka was on the team. Yeah. Yes. Finally. 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 Let's hope that um, Mr. Okada, the non Kazuchika kind, can recognize the, the talent that he has in Waka, Skiyama, and Hanako. There's great teaming of the two of them. They worked very, very well together. But man, Waka. The man, this company has been sleeping on this girl for far too long. So it was nice to see her being able to celebrate in this one. That being said, um, I do look forward to seeing the growth of Rana and Hina as they continue under God's eye, especially with the, the, the turmoil that we see kind of starting and going on involving hate um, later in the, <laughs> I think it's the next match. No, later in the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I just, I love Rana. I'm such a big Rana fan from the moment saw her wrestle the first time. I was like, Ooh, this girl is good already. Her first match really really good each time you see her she's just getting better and better and better and better she remembers her her injuries she remembers her cells she has a variety of cells she has a variety of attitude that she comes in with her timing is so good her strikes are so solid this girl's gonna have a very and her look solid this girl's gonna have a phenomenal future in this business for sure Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. I do have a pick. Ooh. And we move on to the eighth woman tag match. It is hate. Mm -hmm. It is Azusa and Naba, Natsuka Tora, Rina, and Aka taking on Cosmic Angels, Aya Sakura, Sayoriani, Sayaka Kurara, and Yuna Mizumori. Kurara. Kurara. Do you just love saying Kurara? Kurara. I. Because it's so fun. I absolutely adore Inaba's new, like, dark Inaba look. Uh, I... Yes! Th this... Put, moving her to hate has given her just a... Has given her a, her character. She was always very much... I always thought of her as, like, the mini version of her sister. Mm -hmm. Before now, I feel like she is distinctly her own person while mm -hmm. still using a lot of that, like, uh, martial arts background. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the look on her you know what she kind of reminded me of a little bit remember um uh starlight kids former new blood tag team partner um why did her name just escape me right now the robot lady karma was her name when she was in that one personality oh god 
Haruka and um, Haruka? I th Umasaki. Only... Haruka Umasaki. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminded me of like both her personalities and one person. Mm -hmm. Because Karma was intentionally made to look a little bit more, I don't want to say grotesque, but like just not like everybody else. Whereas Haruka Umasami, Umasaki's character was pretty much in a schoolgirl outfit and very cutesy, very sweet, very. Mm. Oh, did I just do that trend? Very demure, very cutesy. Anyway, um, Azusa in Hate is the perfect combination of both of those personalities in one. She's got that cutesy pretty prettiness about her, but then she's got that evil kind of undertone. I loved it. I absolutely mm. loved it. Also, mm. Hate's music. Mm. Did you listen to their intro? I did. Oh my god, I can't find that music anywhere. Stardom, please. It's fire. It Give is us fire. that music. It probably slaps as hard as they do. It's insane. Yeah. It's so yeah. good and it fits so good. Just the whole presence and performance, the theatrics that come on whenever hate is coming out. It's just so good. So They're the good. perfect heel faction. So good. Right. So good. Oh, so good. I got you. I got a hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got hate. I yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So hates ganging up on Karara early on. Rocky has a cross face on Karara. She fights, fights, and eventually gets to the ropes. Um, uh, uh, Yuna and Rocket slamming into each other's shoulder blocks, and he has to go up to the second rope to hit a shoulder block to drop her. I, I really like that little spot. Uh, same. And now, and now is in with Aya, and she uh, hit, kick, kicks her in the back. Uh, then comes hits a bulldog while Rena hit, or sorry, she kicks Aya in the back from the from the apron. Then comes in, um, hits a bulldog, and then Arena comes in with a just kick, this running kick to the face and like chest looks just brutal. Uh, gets a two count. Uh, sliding lariat by Yuna and the Northern Lights by Aya Sakura to Rena for two. Uh, then in she, then Aya gets to the triangle, but it's broken up. I uh, hate all her attacking Aya. Uh, and then everyone's in and out, hitting each other with moves. It's like one in move, one in move, just just back and all that back and forth. Aya comes kind of finishes the sequence with a guillotine knee or the hell's guillotine off the second rope to Arena. Very reminiscent of uh Red Narita with that mm -hmm. guillotine knee. Uh, she gets a two count of that. Arena fights back, slams her. She hits a suplex. She goes up to the top, but is pulled down by Sayori Anu. Cosmic Angels all attack her. Aya hits a, hits uh, the head kick, then pulls it like almost like an inverted triangle around the neck of R Rina. And Rina's fighting and fighting. She's trying to get a foot on the on the rope, but she can't. So she is forced to tap out to Aya Sakura, and then. After it just, just I, I loved it. And then after the match, you have Aya holding up the future title, looking right at Rena. And it has been announced that at New Blood 15 on September 29th, we will get Aya Sakura versus Rena for the future of stardom title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Aya kind of got her butt kicked in this didn't she she kind of earned that title shot um something i wanted to note because you got a lot of the the spots that i i did write down um tora suspiciously quiet mm -hmm. this match has been suspiciously quiet the match is going into this and I have opinions on it that are not very good. I'm disappointed in the handling of Natsuka Tora this year. Mm -hmm. I was also disappointed with it last year, but this year, this year has just perpetuated that disappointment further. And I'm looking at this going, woman, why? Why did you, they, they, they literally just put the title on her. She defunct a way to tie, created hate, and then boom, took her title away so you took the wind 
out of her sales, hate is still going strong. They got the goddess of stardom titles. They got um, Rena and Azusa with the new blood titles. You've got Rena with the future title. You have a very strong, unquestionably strong, unquestionably dominant unit in hate. Kamitani as well. That uh, Mama Watanabe. It's just, you, you have just unquestionable power. And you did them so dirty by taking that world title. Because that world title really has become a little bit of a hot potato. And <clears throat> they're, 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 we'll, we'll talk about the, the main when we get there. But man, the, the, this is supposed to be their highest rated title. And I feel like it's getting the least amount of proper attention. And the person holding that title is supposed to be the most reputable person in the company. Right now, I'm being told by this company that Mayu Iwatani is. Yeah. Well, I like, legitimately, especially even after tonight, I feel like the Wonder title is in a bit better position than the world title just and we'll talk about this more when we get to the world title just i'm mm. not happy with the world title right now it, it just mm. it, it's it's booking over the last little while has just perplexed me perplexed it's been garbage yeah it's been it's been trash it's been trash yeah we'll, we'll talk about when we get to the main event yeah yeah we'll go on more of a rant then because i got ish no, no, we got rant we got both got rants we got rants no rants for days and then so we move on sixth woman tag it is kohaku mm -hmm. and neo genesis which is may sarah and starlight kid taking on stars koguma momo kogo and saya ida uh i really like the balloon gimmick with neo genesis they'll come out with balloons it's cute. and I, I love it yeah it's, just, it's, a, it's a cute fun little thing that just makes them Especially with the with their Titan Shrine, which the Neo Genesis logo is like like in balloon writing. It's a like balloon animal, essentially. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like the bull. It's all made like the letters are made of balloons. I it just it's, yeah, it yeah. suits it. So I love Koguma. She comes over to Neo Genesis trying to get a high five before the match from them. <laughs> Nobody wants high five her, and I'm like, what the hell? And then so Koguma starts doing her bear pose, and like so the kid will push her out of the way and do like a cat pose thing. Yeah, she was doing like the tiger pose or whatever. Tiger pose or whatever. And it was a great, and then they were like doing it it's in the match uh, to start the match. Mm -hmm. They're both uh, rolling around posing until Kagumba rolled her up for two. It was just great. I loved it. Um, Starl's triple see, teaming yeah. May May and hit that triple drop kick at one point. Um, Ida gets the speed chops on May May uh, on the rose, but she comes back with a running strike and a springboard drop kick off of the second. Um, Ida, do Ida is in there with uh, Kohaku. She dodges Kohaku, sweeps the leg, hits a sliding Larry for two, and then they just unload on each other, and it was awesome. These two oh, just glorious. swung for the fences here. It was so good. Mm -hmm. so I good. agree. I agree. Yeah, Ko uh, Momoko gets in. She hits a Rana, sending Kohaku into the ropes. It's a 619 at one point. <clears> two. <throat> Uh, Kohaku sends her into the uh, into the bottom rope and then hits like a Natsu Poi style drop kick through the ropes, just crushing Kogo. Holy mm -hmm. crap! Then pulls her back inside and hits just just solid ass suplex for two. Just mm -hmm. oh, so good. Um, Kogo Mama Kogo hits a comes in with it's a super kick or eventually fights back. Gets a super kick tornado DDT to Kohaku. Uh, stars, stars are all in. They hit that triple wheelbarrow double face buster, but Kogo's pin does get broken up by Neo Genesis. The end of the match, Neo Genesis hits a double enziguri to Momo Kogo, and Kohaku, Kohaku hits the this just brutal looking running knee to the face. She then picks mm -hmm. her up and hits the best thing to say is sit out Angel's wings for the win. Yeah, it it was like that. She put in a pedigree thing. Like, Is that the one like, I'm thinking of? Yeah, like the pedigree position or like Chris Angel wings position. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was trying to write down what I thought that was because, like, what in the hell? Miyamasaki does something that? very similar too. Uh, Miyu does that yeah. similar move to that, yeah. Yeah, it was like that sit out kind of face bustery looking kind of thing, but like, like a sit, this one was like a that pedigree hook. sitting down. Like yeah, a, a, almost like sit a almost pedigree? like a double, almost like a double hook, like pile driver, but they're coming down more in like the pedigree position. Like if you botched the pile driver and you just went yeah. for a pedigree instead. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I I, I, yeah. I like it. Don't get me wrong. Mio's is okay, where she okay. jumps up in the air and like comes down. Yeah. It's very a little bit different, but yeah, I I really mm -hmm. like it. Solid finish here with the with that knee strike and then this like sit out pedigree style thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I love listening to the commentary. I listen to Japanese commentary. I love listening to them say Momo Koko's name because obviously it's backwards. It's Koko Momo. But they say it so fast. Koko it's like Momo. a tongue twister. Koko Momo. Koko Momo. Koko Momo. I was like, oh Koko my god. Koko it sounds Koko like Koko Momo. It was I funny. It I enjoyed that. Um, but, but we're not going to have to listen to Japanese commentary much longer. Yeah. Okay, let me get it out. Yeah. We'll get to that later. That's a Japanese wrestling update thing. You know, but I want to talk about um, it on the show. At the end. We'll talk about it at the end. So anyway, um, yeah, the, the machine gun chops by Ida on Mei Mei were brutal. Love those. Love those machine gun chops. Um, Kohaku, really meet, matching Ida for uh, power. Really, really enjoyed that because it was like two little powerhouses just colliding constantly. It was great. Awesome. Um, there was a little stumble uh, going up into the diving headbutt from Kohaku, but she recovered really, really quickly. Um, the springboard drop kick that Momo Coco does coming into the ring on that hot tag was insane. That was like some Kevin Knight height on that spring. It was oh, great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. Um, there was oh, that yeah. one point right before the that DDT that um, Momo Coco did. They actually on commentary called it a 619 DDT. Because she kind of went through the ropes and went from the, like, used the momentum from that into the tornado DDT. Oh, you're you're right. I didn't even think that. I thought she kicked the rope, but she did it. But I didn't realize she went through the ropes doing it. Mm. Mm, I like it. Gold star me. Um, <clears throat> yeah. That's all Plat I had. That was the last thing. Star. Platinum serve. Yeah. You. Yes, that was a good one. Yes, I agree. <laughs> this was overall a really fun match. Uh, something else I wanted to kind of note in this is that I've actually really been enjoying the evolution that we've seen from Starlight Kid. We we were so used to seeing her as this outspoken, loud, brash heel in Oedo Tai, who I would have I actually kind of considered more the mouthpiece. Um, of the, the faction, even over, you know, um, the captain, Hitsuka Tora, who's a very good talker, very good promo cutter. Um, since the exit of Starlight Cave, we've seen her kind of take over that role in Neo Genesis, which I love because it gives, like, we've always seen Mei Mei as this outgoing, hyper happy individual. But I feel like she gains a lot of confidence in proximity with Starlight Kid. And I've noticed the same thing with the other team members of Neo Genesis, like Azumi, like Suzu Suzuki, like Miyu Amasaki. We see them really bonding together. And I feel like Starlight Kid is the TJ Cannon of Neo Genesis. She is the glue that holds everything together. She's the TJ Cannon. She's the great Okan. She holds everything together. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. I said what I said. I meant what I said. Uh, yeah, you know, Genesis. You look at that. Up. Looks so cute. And she's still got her Spark Joshi title from uh, over here in the States, too. Oh, Starlight Kid. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a confrontation also between Starlight Kid and Kaguma post-match. Kaguma kind of still doing her little bear ears. And Starlight Kid saying, nay, nay. We won. No, 
It's May well, May. It's <laughs> May May. <laughs> nay nay May May. Well, actually, nay nay ko- Kohaki Kohaku. She was the one who won. Yeah. So we move <laughs> on to the next match. And it is number six woman tag. It is Gadai, Lady C, Saki Kashima, <laughs> and Shuri taking on the team of hate, which is Konami, Mama Watanabe, and Tekla. This match, I I love this match. I holy crap, I love this match. Mm-hmm. Dude, mm-hmm. just just from the entrance, Ko, Konami coming out with that new robe and the dark oh, yeah. look just looks so evil. Like it's so it, it suits her so much. Agreed. Like Agreed. I like her. I was with... surprised when she came back with God's eye because she left yeah. with a winter tie. Yeah, I liked her with God's eye. Don't get me wrong, the look was great, but it's so much better with this dark black look. I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna oh. lie, it felt disingenuine in God's eye. But she fit there. No, like not to say she didn't, she fit there. It was just the the actions, the way she was fighting, everything she was doing in God's Eye. It did have a level of disingenuousness. Yeah, and Suri's me. Suri's gear with that weird shimmering color to it, the turquoise oh, purple. Yeah, yeah, that was so good, and it was like shiny mm-hmm. too. It was a little bit shiny. Like it was. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. God, I it loved had it. that metallic reflection in it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kona, Siri does like that pose where she puts a foot over the top rope and she like stands like mm-hmm. her, her arms out wide and Konabi just walks up to her on the apron and like drags her out like grabs her and like drags her to the floor and God's eye takes out takes or sorry not God's I hate takes God's eye to the floor they're all whipping him into chairs in the crowd I mm-hmm. uh, hate starts triple taming Saki in the corner Thekla gets a Muda lock on her but it's mm-hmm. broken up by God's eye. Um, mm-hmm. Mobo and Suri trading she kicks. She was mean about that. Sorry, she was mean about that Muda lock too, because she locked in the legs first, and then before actually putting in the Muda lock, she did that Zack Saber Junior thing where she dropped down several times, hyperextending the knee further before getting into the Muda lock. It was so mm-hmm. mean. I love it. It was uh, Mobo and Suri the kick trading. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, it's a great sequence. Suri hits a German to Momo, but then Momo comes back with a half and half suplex, and then they both get up and like kick each other in the head and drop each other. So phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Konami getting uh, dual triangle chokes over the corners to Saki and Suri. I uh, hate then triple team Saki. Konami gets this like just oh, painful looking PK to Saki for two. Just oh. Uh, Saki fights back. She's unloading strikes and kicks on Konabi. Drops her, gets a two. Uh, Godzai end up triple teaming, and Suri and Saki hit dual kicks to Konami. And Saki hits like an angel or a, like an angel's wings for a two. Uh, the ref gets taken out here. Uh, Saki, mm-hmm. as, as ref gets taken out, Saki gets a kishikase on Konami, and she has her in for easily the, the, the three count. Um, mm-hmm. it gets broken up. Konami with a German to Saki, but the pin gets broken up. The ref gets got put back in for that. Uh, Suri mm-hmm. taken out with a huge kick, uh, by Konami or was it by Konami or Momo? And then Momo gets her in like a chokehold as she's watching Konami with Saki on her on her on all fours, and she just up kicks Saki in the face. And Saki like goes into like a kneeling position. You can see her like kind of like wobbling all like days like at the end of a flight and like a mortal Kombat finish her like and she does she just hits that buzzsaw kick to the head and then just sits down on top of saki one two three and it's just oh no it was a phenomenal finish talk about this before we get into the post match um so the the I mean, I love the jump start. I love it when hate does the jump starts because the jump starts make sense. They're not dragging and everything, but they were eating people, especially Lady C. She seemed to got taken out pretty early in this one. We didn't see her a whole ton. Um, 
I really enjoyed, as you mentioned, uh, Thecla and Saki. Um, Saki really standing up to Thecla very, very confidently, um, despite getting beaten down pretty quickly. Um, I really I was impressed with that because we're not used to seeing that kind of fighting spirit out of Saki. We're used to seeing her playing the cowardly lion quite a bit and hiding behind Shuri especially, um, or Mirai, um, or Ami. And since Ami is kind of out on injury right now, Mirai is not around anymore. She really does have only uh, Shuri to kind of hide behind. Um, there was that double abdominal stretch that Lady C oh. uh, managed to get on Thecla and Konami, which I thought was I pretty jumped impressive. Over that one. I jumped over that one, man. That was a great spot. <laughs> It and was, Thecla was the one to get the hand on the rope to break it, too. Yeah. And what I loved about it and what I love about the experience, the in-ring experience and veteran level of people like Konami, Akumamo, Watanabe, and Thecla is that they sold so well. They gave so much. This match was so great because each team was giving back and forth so good. This was the best that these women could possibly do at the time and experience that they have and it was it was gold it was so good um gold. i love thecla's in-ring style just the uniqueness of her style is just so cool doing that bridge dodge by um when suri was trying to, to hit her with that lariat spinning around and turning it into the, i think what they called the spider spear Mm -hmm. on Shuri was so good and Shuri again so damn good so experienced in that ring um yeah as you mentioned the Shuri uh Momo confrontation was so good the strikes back and forth were just insane mm -hmm. and like I was honestly looking forward to and getting excited for the confrontation between Shuri and Konami but like Momo Mo really is like a silent Andy Anderson. Because you know how Andy Anderson really just knows how to piss you off and get you fired up? Momo has that effect on people. Mm -hmm. The subtle things that she does in the ring, the subtle kind of smirks and faces that she looks at, like gives you while she's doing her matches. I'm just like, oh, man. I would I would fall into the exact same trap everybody else does. Man, I that natural competition would just come right out. Um what uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was it was really impressive again, Saki. How she actually tagged Shuri out when we almost got that Konami Shuri mix. Momo tagged out to Konami. Um, she already tried, tagged out to Saki, the zest and just spiciness in which Saki came in and was just like, no, I can do this and just started feeding forearms to Konami was ineffective, but adorable because you saw that fire in her and it wasn't a comical spot in any means. She was going as hard as she could. And this was a, a moment to just show exactly how strong and how powerful konami is especially in the face of someone is more technical um and high speed like um saki um the irony isn't it that it came down to these two at the end of the match especially considering saki was booted from a way to tie accepted into God's eye by Shuri, and Konami was the one sitting there going, mm, should we trust her? She just came out of a way to tie. Mm -hmm. Is she the trustworthy? We should, a way to tie antics die hard, I believe was the, the closest to what she said. We have to be careful about her evil tendencies. Ain't that the pot paint in the kettle, huh? I guess having that spray can is the best weapon for her, right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, though, what an end. And, like, the perfect picture, because you can see Konami flipping off <laughs> Shuri in the corner there. <laughs> it is such perfection. It is such this, perfection. Yes, this feud in general has been so good. This has been the stardom version 
of like war dogs versus empire for me. Mm -hmm. It just is enjoyable and just as brutal. I love it. Yep. Uh, and then post match, uh, Konami gets the mic. She says, "What do you mean, protect protection, Siri? You're destined protection from Siri. You're destined to run away for the rest of your life." Saying that to Saki and Kashima Jet, she's insane. She goes after Konami. It, a brawl just breaks out between both teams, and like hates and Konami just beating on Saki until Siri breaks it up and runs off. Uh, hate. Uh, Suri then says, Tekla, what Momo at the Nabi? First, I'll take back the goddess belts you've got with Saki. And then, and Konami, you can come after that. Keep your head down and wait. Yeah. To which I say, as great a match as that is going to be, for the love of all things holy. Okada of the non kazuchika kind, do not degrade this faction any further. It, it has been hard enough. Like, I'm struggling with the whole Torah situation. That was just a whole stupid booking thing. That it just, and if they continue to book further, I mean, I already have opinions on the world title match that we have to talk about. T removing any more gold from this faction right now without giving them the proper heat and the proper story to go behind it. They have a proper story, but this faction needs some more credibility. It just formed, and it formed under the banner of the world champion, very similarly to how Empress Nexus Venus also formed with Mina and Micah. So we need that to continue. We need these girls to stay elevated. We need to stay the, uh, have these girls stay as the higher credible faction in this company. So we need those tag titles to stay right where they are. Yeah, I agree with you fully. I I really do. Again, like I I feel like the story will conclude with Saki and uh, Suri taking the tag titles, but I I, I don't feel like it's going to hurt hate as much as losing the world title did. The least they yeah, but the, if you keep taking away much. gold from them, pretty soon they're going to have nothing, and they're going to be exactly what they were at the beginning of the year. Yeah, but the, very if you have to have gold, or very boring. But if you have to have gold, does your faction really hold up that well? That's the I other mean, thing. Is your faction yeah, strong? How much hold up the gold you have is showing how powerful your faction is. If you put them on a weaker faction. And, and let's be honest, God's Eye, they have some pretty powerful people, but Mummy's out on injury right now. I wouldn't consider Saki a powerhouse. I wouldn't consider Lady C a powerhouse. I don't consider Hina a powerhouse. And I don't consider Yagami one yet either. So it's like you literally only have one experienced wrestler. I don't maybe Saki isn't quite inexperienced, but I wouldn't say she's goddess of stardom level experienced yet i would say ami is for sure because she's held the title before and it's not to take away from saki saki's a great wrestler i just feel that this is out of her league for defense right now with what it is that she has but that being said i mean if that's the case well maybe we can put something else on someone else later which we will discuss that you missed yeah <laughs> so we move on to a singles contest. It is Suzu Suzuki versus Tomowaka. And now about this is Neo Genesis versus God's Eye. Uh, Mina has joined commentary for this match. So you have another mm -hmm. voice on the commentary team. Uh, Suzu takes her to the floor, tosses her into the chair, she takes her into the ramp, snap mares around the ramp, then uh, uh, into a seated position, runs up the ramp, then comes back, peeking, and Naba in the back. Uh, and Naba unloading with some nice kicks and knees back in the ring. Uh, Susan gets a running knee to the face when uh, when Anaba is seated in the corner at one point, climbs to the top, hits a drop kick off the top. Beautiful looking drop kick. Um, 
And Naba at one point starts unloading Muay Thai knees to the head where she's got the clutch in and she's just like rocking the knees into the face of Suzu. Uh, she gets a two count, then applies a cross face and then rolls her back to center to keep it for, for uh, Suzu from breaking the holding next to the rope. And she then transitions into the dragon sleeper. But Suzu finally gets her hand onto the ropes. Just great sequence there uh, showing the technical ability of uh, Naba. Uh, Suzu unloading just these vicious elbows to the face at one point, and then she like she brings her down the mat. She's like in a mount, just dropping these elbows and forearms onto her. Then hits some, some harsh ass kicks. Uh, she runs at a Naba, but she gets caught with a Michinoku driver or the Zack driver if you're nasty. Then Naba hits head kicks and another Michinoku Zack driver for two. Um. Suzu fights back. She hits a tequila shot for two. She hits a head kick for two. Uh, Inaba fights back, but then Suzu catches her rolling chaos theory, that German rolling through into the other German with the bridge for the win. Yay. This was a freaking war, though. Holy crap. The strikes back and forth, moves back and forth. And Naba fought hard in this. And it showed on Suzuki's face. Holy crap. Like, we've seen her go through battles, especially with the Grand Prix. I mean, Risa Sarah, former partner, leader, mentor. That match was on fire, but holy crap. I feel like this might have pleasantly taken Suzu by surprise. Because she seemed a little bewildered at certain points. But also, like, she was extremely enjoying herself. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> like, she's a little sadistic, but, I mean, that's what we love about Suzu. She is literally the murder granddaughter. It makes sense. You you can put her on the, the balloon team, but that doesn't take the psychopath uh, the out of the balloon animal. The murder granddaughter, I love it. She is. She is. I love this match. This was a lot of fun. I was very pleased with, with it. It felt like a very good, awesome, just strong style match. There were no crazy shenanigans. There was some outside stuff. Like too crazy. It's just a really good, solid match. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Mm -hmm. We move on to a... Oh, there's Susie, or Susie with her German there, with that in German for the win. Look at that Susie bridge, yeah. Got her arm raised. We move on to the tag team match. It is stars Hanan and Mayu Iwatani versus Neo Genesis's Azum Genesis Genesis Neo Genesis uh, Azumi and Mio Amasaki. I don't know how to pluralize Genesis. Genesis is doesn't sound right. It, is it genesis? Is it pluralizing or is it just ownership? I don't know Genesis's or Genesis. Representing Gen Neo Genesis. Yeah, representing Neo Genesis Azumi and me. Let me second it. <laughs> like super fast start with Mayo and Azumi, then they tag out, and Hanan and Miu then have this really fast sequence, really good there. Um, mm. Hanan slamming Miu near the ropes and tags in Mayu, who just hops over the top, double stomping the hell out of Miu. Oh, dude, mm -hmm. brutal. And then she gets a camel clutch in. Hanan runs the ropes, gaining speed, and drop kicks uh, Mew in the face. Um, Mayu uh, gets this, like, goes for, like, meeting of the minds, where she tries to slam Azumi uh, into uh, Mew, but it gets reversed. And then Mew uh, hits this assisted tornado DDT to Mayu Batani, and Azumi hits a head kick for two. <clears throat> Uh, Miyu and Azumi double team Hanan, and uh, Miyu hits the pendulum DDT, but the pin gets broken up. Um, Mayu, I wrote dorp kicks <laughs> instead of drop kicks, I reversed the, the, uh, the, dorp, the old dorp kick, you know. The old dorp kick, Mayu oh, hits that's, drop that's kick gonna be a thing going forward, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, Mayu drop kicks Miyu out of the ring, Hanan goes up. But uh, it's for the dive to the floor. But Azumi runs up, arm drags her off. Azumi then goes up, but Mayu runs up and superplexes uh, Azumi off of the top rope. 
Uh, then Mayu goes to the top, but then Mio jumps up and super DDTs uh, Mayu off the top. It was just a sequence of awesome off the top. I love it. I love it. Glorious, uh, glorious chaos. Yeah, Mio and Hanat, and they, just the battles between the two are so good. They're just so fast. Uh, and uh, uh, Azumi comes in, hits a brain buster to Mayu, then goes uh, to whip her off the ropes, but Mayu ends up hitting a Tofei Suicida to Miu on the floor. Just so good off the whip from Azumi. Hanan then comes in, run, hits a running famous here to Azumi. And then, uh, so, uh, stars and hit this like double angels wings style move there, uh, to Miu Amasaki and Hanan hits the bridging back drop driver for the win. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yep. Um, so at my notes here, you actually think a lot of what I said. I'm really um, good at my job. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I did want to mention that I've been mentioning for a little bit and that I did still see kind of coming out in this match, I've been seeing some heel tendencies starting to pop out a little bit in Mayu Iwatani, and I certainly saw it in this match further, especially with Miyu. Um, with Azumi, she seemed pretty focused and pretty, you know, dialed in. But with Miyu, when she got her in that camel clutch, I was like, man, this is such a heel thing right now. She put her in the camel clutch and she started yelling at the crowd, come on, come on, me, you, me, you, me, you. Like, I was like, that's very much a healy thing. What are you doing, girl? There was another point where um, I can't remember if it was Azumi or Miu that she ran into the corner, but she ran into the corner. The crowd actually booed a little bit at her actions as she turned around and was like, what? <sighs> you do heal things? The crowd's going to boo you, girl? Come on now. You know that. You've been doing this long enough. Um, I'm starting to see those tendencies rubbing off on her little protege in Henan. We're starting to see some of these little angsty things. Now, I know that, like, stars has kind of usually been the face and i don't see them turning fully faced because i don't think that would be too wildly accepted by the fans anyway but it's interesting to see them taking a, a los ingobernables de japon kind of mentality to the faction that has up until this point kind of been the faciest of face teams that this company had Andre, what do you think about that well, yeah, and especially now with Neo Genesis here, they're the faces. I feel like they're trying to, they're kind of moving into that top spot of faces, faces that ever faced out other way, except for Suzu, who's just evil incarnate, but in a good, but on the, like, she's, she is the most powerful Sith, but works with the Jedi. Uh, like she's that's, Darth Revan. So that's what you're saying. She is the Darth yeah. Revan. I don't remember which one that is. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the video game. Oh, you're right, Kotor. Remember, you play as Darth Revan in the first one. You don't know Darth you're Revan Darth was... Revan. You don't know you're Revan till the end, though. Evil always finds a way. And like, if I you always, play like, the I dark side, like, you do. I always play the good side in Kotor. I prefer the good side. I played both, but I prefer the good side. Um, it I just mean, Well, people respond to you better, don't they? Yeah. Oh, Mocha God. Chaka yes, Faka. Right? So much easier to, to beat that game on, on the light side than in the dark side. Um, but it's just, yeah, and, and there's little t- little hints going on that they're not quite the squeaky, clean, good guys that they used to be. There's some grime. There's yeah. some grime at the bottom of that uh, tub, for sure. It's getting a little dirty. Getting a little dirty. <laughs> Melville just... Sneezing the hell, holy hell, she muted just in time, but she violently shook on that <laughs> sneeze. Which is hilarious. I did, <laughs> I knew it was coming. So, post match, uh, Azumi and Mayu Tani have a little face off looking like, Hey, we're setting up our IWGP title for the Nagoya show on, Octo- on October 5th. 
But no. No. That is not to be. Because a video appears. From the Timeless one. Tony Storm says, Hello, my name is Timeless Tony Storm. I am yours. Japan, have you forgotten me? Stardom, do you remember who I am? I have never forgotten you. I have accomplished many things in Japan, but I have respect for the Japanese professional wrestling. Go on. <laughs> and that isn't something that I must do in Japan. In 2017, I became World of Stardom champion, but some people say that it was a mishap. On that night, uh, she did win after two minutes because Mayu Tani got hurt and she was awarded the world title in that in that match um so yeah uh on october I, i'll prove that it was not on october 5th at the nagoya tournament i will challenge mayu itani for the iwgp women's championship mayu san you may be an icon of stardom and an icon of pro- women's professional wrestling but you are no match for me I will become the new IWGP Women's Champion. I will mess you up. I will stop the clock and make stardom timeless. Hold your head up high. Hold your chest up. And don't miss it. Thank you. I know that was terrible, but I, I wanted to. I, I I live for the accent. That that was that was tremendous. Uh, Didn't she do the chin up to its outlook for the shoe? No, no, she did. Uh, hold your, I, she might have. This is. I just pulled this direct translation off of their site, so she might have done uh, chin up, uh, chest chin up, chest out. She yeah. Did. yeah, this is just a version I pulled off start off of starting. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, because I I watched it. Yeah, I watched the whole thing that yeah. earlier, and it said she she definitely said watch for the shoot. Yeah. Um, so it was my Tani gets the mic res- to respond. She said, Good evening to everyone in Osaka. Wow, amazing, amazing. This has turned out to be amazing. Tony Storm, sorry, my eyesight is bad. So, what date did you say? Nagoya, September, October. What day in Nagoya? Fifth? Let me start again on October 5th, the Nagoya tournament. When I was red belt champion in Nagoya, I got injured, dislocated my elbow after two minutes and 30 seconds, and Tony took the belt away from me. She was the match was stopped and Tony was awarded the title. Uh, October you know that 5th. sounds like to me show versus you for the IWGP junior tag team or the junior tag team, not the tag, the junior championship. Why do yeah. I keep saying tag? Mm-hmm. But show retained his belt in that situation. Um, mm-hmm. October 5th in Nagoya, overcoming my own trauma. Tony Storm, uh, Mayu Itani, the total icon of stardom, won with. I will defend this belt, so please support me. Azumi w- will accept this belt no matter who challenges her at any time, but I'm going to beat Tony's arm, so just wait for me. I swear to Azumi, know everyone here in the venue watching the pay-per-view and all around the world that the true IWGP champion is Mayu Iwatani. Please support me. Now. No, I want Tony to win this. I want Tony to win this so badly. I do as well. I think for different reasons, though. I think, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I haven't asked you what your reasons are yet. But for me... Because because when when she rematches with Mariah May in February, it'll be all the, both belts on the line, and Mariah May will become the IWGP Women's Champion. Oh, they haven't, they've never done that on AEW before. That's what I'm saying. They're going to do that. <laughs> no, they don't. They, they Come on now. We need to encourage that company to have more diversity and in it. And that includes in storylines. They already did that storyline. They can't do that again. That would really show Tony's incompetence. I do, however, agree that I feel like Tony Storm needs to win it. Only because I, I briefly visited this when we did the uh, the roundtable with Boris and and Matt. Um, I feel like the title, the IWGP Women's title, has kind of fallen into the the wayward wind, if you will. Um, it's kind of become a lackluster, uh, um, uh, less importante um, title, almost KOPW level title level, which is not good that was supposed to be their junior title that's 
kind of joins together um, New Japan sort of and stardom sort of with also North America sort of. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the original plan was with the belt, <laughs> but it has certainly gone offside. Um, that being said, though, with Mercedes Monet having the New Japan Strong Women's Championship, I feel that this would be a good opportunity to bring a little bit more attention to the stardom product by having Tony Storm go over there and defeat Mayu Iwatani and then creating this trade-off back and forth of the women are now like, we want to see, we want our belt back. Essentially, we want our championship back in Japan. This could set up tremendous tournament style things in stardom where it's like, who's the next person to challenge Tony Storm? Will it be at an all in show? Will it be at a whatever else they have? I don't know the names of all of their pay per views. Could it be Whoa. at the next big show? Could it be at a forbidden door? Could they bring Tony over for Wrestle Kingdom to defend the title there? Could they bring it over for Queendom? and have her defend it there it, there's so many intelligent marketing opportunities with tony storm having this title well you have historic crossover in november where she could mm -hmm. defend it you have dream queendom at the end of the year you have wrestle kingdom on january 4th you have wrestle dynasty which is the next day at the tokyo dorm which is aew new japan roh um cmll and stardom all on that mm -hmm. show you could be defending it at wrestle dynasty for all we know again there is so many up there's the american shows that she can defend it on again there is mm -hmm. there's uh wrestle there uh what's the show at, in october um oh, wrestle wrestle dream there's wrestle dream there's uh full <laughs> november there's a uh, world's end at the end of december like, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot is what we're saying. And and there's so many opportunity for them to to be marketable with this. We just need Rocky and Gato to be kind of hitting it and don't let Tony or Dustin touch it. And don't let Okada of the non Kazuchika kind. Because, like, at this point, I have more faith in Okada Kazuchika being able to book a stardom show more so than Okada of the non-Kazuchika kind. And you yeah. know what? I think I would like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a fun. Wonder of Stardom <laughs> Championship. It is Natsu Poi versus Hazu. Uh, this the opening for this was so good. Poi starts slapping Hazuki. Hazuki then grabs Poi by her hair and just starts just tossing her like while well, hold oh, tossing, tossing her by her hair. repeatedly, not just like one throw and let go. She kept holding the air and just like was ragdolling this she girl. Had at least ten or twelve yeets oh, in there yeah. with that. It was brutal. I was. It was like she was trying to rip out her hair extensions. Yeah, she starts choking her. Uh, Hazuki gets the face wash on the rope, but misses the boot and the ropes. And Poi gets her down and does the face wash against the boot and the ropes. Poi then grabs Hazuki, tossing, like, ragdolling her by her hair, too. And then uh, she starts the face wash, but Hazuki rises, attacks Poi, and then she gets her onto the bottom rope, face washes her. Then Poi rises up, and then... Uh, gets Hazuki back in the ropes, and then she does uh, like a harsh like face wash. She then gets her drop kick in the ropes, uh, then goes up uh, for Hazuki on the floor because she had rolled the floor after the drop kick, but she misses the dive off the top, landing on every on everybody else on the floor. Mm -hmm. And has come as soon as poise up, she comes rocketing out of the ring with that tope suicida, just crashing into them, and just just great sequence, man. Oh, she's a great These girls were ready to fight, and boy, howdy, did they ever! Both these girls have a history of savagery in this company, and it was very much on display in this match. 
Yeah, a little bit later in the match, Suzuki's just hitting repeated elbows to Natsupoi. Natsupoi goes down, and she's just elbowing her in the back of the head, just just feeding her shots to the back of the head. I'm like, God damn. She picks her up, slams her. She goes up to the top, but gets knocked off by Poi to the floor. This is where Poi hits her high across to Hazuki onto the floor. Um, yeah, just, oh, so good. Uh, Hazuki hits a spring, like does like a springboard off the rope to hop over net, landing behind her and Germans her uh, like halfway across the ring, then comes at her with a big boot. Poi comes back with this huge spin kick to the head, and they both go down. Excuse me. Uh, just crazy what these two are doing. Uh, Hazuki dodges the splash off the top. Uh, slams Poi, hits a second rope sent on, then goes up and hits a top rope sent on for two. Uh, Nat stops the brain buster, but Hazuki gets her into the cross face, then transitions into this like clover leaf style move. And then, just, but it, she's got the knee in the back, lion tamer style, just pulling back. Oh, it was like a, it was like a cross leg lion tamer. <laughs> It was, it was. I thought it was a clover leaf when she first yeah, put it on her. The best I could say is a clover leaf, but she has that knee in the back lion tamer style, like just. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Nat fights. She does get to the ropes. Um, Didn't has, Jay White used to do that when he used to use the the clover leaf when he would do the tap out? Tanahashi tap out is what he used to call it. Wasn't I, I it? think so. I think so. Yeah, I could be wrong. It just came into my head. Yeah, um, has you? Well, I could a, be. <laughs> Hazuki hits a big boot, goes up, but then gets cut off. Poi hits a German off the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Nat, with these repeated super kicks, does that kneeling spin kick to uh, a, a down Hazuki, goes up, ferial splash off the top. But she only gets two. Uh, Poi goes for him, but Hazuki reverses, hits a brain buster for two. Poi comes back, hits the SOS. S -O -S. Uh, then she does the small package and rolls around the ring into the small package for the win, retaining the Wonder of Stardom Championship. Mm -hmm. Holy someone crap. Someone else mentioned, oh gosh, yeah, this match was absolutely heavy hitting. This was reminiscent to me of like the, the battle between Tam and Poi before Poi was joining Cosmic Angels. It was that heavy, that hard. Um, something also to mention, when the kicks sequence was happening there and Poi was feeding all those kicks to Hazuki, Hazuki would go down and she would do that that rise up thing that you were saying earlier, where she would she would take the hit, she'd be flat out, and she'd sit back up shaking her head like, nah, I ain't done yet. She did that about four or five times before taking that little spin kick down to the ground and boy was that little spin kick right on the money that caught her right in the face oh my yeah. god this oh, was a surprisingly so heavy hitting great amazing match i actually enjoyed this match more than the main like in ring this is probably my favorite match of them all story wise mm -hmm. it's the hate six six woman tag Oh, 100 percent yeah but like for just if you're looking at a purely in ring just tell a great story just purely in the ring from bell to bell mm -hmm. it's this one this 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 was pure mm -hmm. fire oh mm -hmm. so good so next do some little promos beforehand also to build up for the the intensity in this match too well they which they, i appreciate it wasn't as profound as the world titles though well they had the press conference which which was leading mm -hmm. into the which, which does give them an opportunity to like confront each other and say shit to mm -hmm. each other. Which I, I love that. I don't understand anything they're saying, but I, I love yeah. that. That's something that I wish would be adapted here. I know it's like a lot of time and stuff, but like WWE tends to do stuff like that. AEW does do stuff like that. I don't know. I think it would be cool. Yeah. They do the post-show press conferences, but no pre-show press conference. Yeah, well, cool. like even like little after show, like the littler shows, um, little conferences to themselves or something for them, their guys to have extra content or filming or something. Because like I've been begging for promos in this area forever. We're finally starting to see some, but like gosh dang. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And 
and, and there might be a shockwave coming to, that gives more time for people to uh, uh, talk on AEW TV in the near future. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes there. Um, Nat's boy talks to Hazuki saying it's not the end. We, I don't, I don't feel any jealousy or hatred. Um, just saying the fans are cheering for both of us and, uh, she wants to face her again for the title. She offers a handshake to Hazuki, but Hazuki shakes her head, uh, gets out of the ring, just leaves, just not leaving Nat's boy there. Uh, Nat's boy mm-hmm. said, you have achieved your first title. Your first, I have achieved my first title defense. I am this. And then Thekla locks out, which I missed on the actual, I skipped over it. I thought it was kind of just her to wrap up her speech. And I went, okay. And I jumped out. Um, so Thekla appears, she's clapping. Uh, she gets in the ring, helps Natsu play up off there, wipes like wipes the sweat off her head uh, with the hate towel. And she's wearing this awesome War Dogs baseball jersey. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I pointed out to you because you didn't see this. I'm I'm not even a huge War Dogs like I like the word I was going to be wrong, but I don't know if I want merch because I, I like their merch. This is the merch I like. Uh, and I also want to TMDK, some TMDK merch. But like, oh, that jersey looks so good. Ah, God damn. Um, so does. She looked like a war dog. She didn't yeah. look like she was wearing camel pants. Yeah. Uh, she then whispers something into Nat's boy's ear. She then like, puts a towel around her neck and leaves. Nat's a boy like takes the towel, slams it on the mat, um, and then picks up the microphone again. She says, Yeah boy, yeah boy, yeah boy. Uh what was Tekla ta- uh, what was Tekla all about? Once again, I am Nat's boy, the twenty third wonder of Stardom champion, Natsu Poi. Uh Natsu Poi's baby <clears throat> story has only just begun. I don't know what the translation fuck up there was. Um maybe she meant white belt story. Yeah, white white road, I think is what she called it, or white belt road, or white yeah, something, white something about a pathway. Was, yeah, something new with the white belt. White story. Uh, yeah, the white belt story. Uh, there are so are many people who still want to fight in the future. So everyone, please look forward to the white belt story from now on. Thank you for today. Bye, boy. Thank you. So cute. Yeah, she's cute. I would love, and this is what I was discussing earlier, I would love to see the showdown between Natsupoi and Thekla. Um, Because after Poi's exit from Donna Del Mondo in the sensational way in which she did, um, Thekla was kind of left reeling because she was close with Poi in that faction. Um, and I feel that 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 Poi's exit was actually the kind of, I think, catalyst for Thecla in her decision to join up with Hate, with Ty, after DDM disbanded. I say this because this was when we noticed a distinct behavioral change in Thecla, because this was where... Poi left, Himika left not long after. We just kind of saw um Thakla, My Sakurai, Julia, Micah just kind of floundering together. And we saw what happened with Micah. Micah was kind of almost like a third wheel for them or a fourth wheel for them. Mm. I kind of felt like Thakla almost started to become a third wheel as well once Micah kind of picked her pathway with Megan Bain. Um, and kind of went off and did her thing there. That look kind of got left in the the kind of back burner while Mai and Julia did their thing. And then we saw what happened with Mai and Julia. Micah went and started her own faction. What, what happened to Decla? If I'm hurt, I'm pissed. And I am pissed at this little fairy. I feel like there's a, a little vicious feud of Bruin with these two, and I hope that it's done right, Okada, of the non kazuchika kind. Don't F it up. Or or, or she convinces Natsupoi to join hate. I mean, I have been calling her the Black Fairy since she joined Cosmic Angel, so I wouldn't be mad about that either. But that being said, does hate need another member right now? Definitely. No. 
I think they're good. I think they have every kind of person that they could use right now. What they need is an effective faction to fight back, to give them something to sink their teeth and claws into. And I think a feud with either Cosmic Angels or God's Eye, which they both set up at this show in particular, would be amazing to elevate hate a little bit more. I know you. Really? Love, what, what, maybe we'll switch. We can give Fuki can death to to Cosmic Angels, and then no. put Natsupoi no, on no. Hayden. No, no, Fuki can death could just leave can leave the company and just. Don't be mean to her. She's so good. You're just creeped out by her face, no, babe, man. She's I, a I good wrestler. I, she's fine, but she's not like everything I've watched of her in ring is fine. Nothing she's the Taka is... Michinoku of her group. No, she's she, the Bushi. She, she is, is the... the fall person because if you remove her, then it's Rena. No, no, she is the Dick Togo of her group. Same shit. She's terrible and she's just there. She happens to be okay, an okay serviceable wrestler. And yeah. I disagree. I think Dick Togo is actually a really good wrestler. He just wrestles like a dick because he's supposed to. Hey, she's the who sucks in New Japan. Um, not a know. lot of people. No, <laughs> not, a, not a lot of people. She's we're, the, we're already at, a, at an hour twenty six, though, man. We got to get to the main yeah, event of the, the evening. evening. Let's go main event of the evening. It is Tam Nakano versus Micah, the winner of the Five Star Grand Prix, facing off against the person who didn't win a single match in the Five Star Grand Prix, but got a title shot on the final night and won the title. Facing off here, uh, Micah, I love, again, we've talked about her look before. It, it, the new look, simple, but great. I like it. Mm -hmm. it. It just it's simple. I like the Fox Max. Yeah. It's just simple but good. Tam's gear here in this match was very but it seems similar style to what she has in the past, but I love the color combination of the purple, gold and black. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was a little darker than what she's usually used to, but I also loved how it was like it was more flamboyant. And Mike is in the fact that, like, where Michael's was very simple and minimalistic, Tam made up for it. It was almost like she stole all of the all flamboyance the for this match. It's like all the fringe. Uh, there's all the so glitter, all the tool, all the sequins. Poor Micah was covered in sequins by the end of the match. Yeah, so there's a great back and forth early. They both end up on the mat with Tam doing her, like, cutesy pose, like, in her head in her hands. Mm -hmm. But Micah like leaning on her el like her elbow on the fist, and the only thing she didn't do is raise her fist in the air, LJ style. And I'm like, oh, it's a NATO style pose. Yes. She did have her arm up to keep herself from rolling over, but it wasn't in a fist. Cause I thought the exact same thing. I was like, is she night wing right now? Is she That's tranquilo? Yeah. Uh, dude, just a back and forth with these girl, these ladies. They fight to the floor. They're whipping each other into the chairs. They're brawling mm -hmm. around ringside. Tam, uh, like, hurts her knee at one point. Uh, I don't know. Uh, getting tossed out or going for a dive or something. She and they landed go, really funny, yeah. Yeah, so they end up on the ramp. She goes up the ramp, and she starts running and, like, trips and falls. And I truly believe her or something in her leg gave out on her on that initial run because she wasn't ready for whatever pain was in the leg from whatever she mm -hmm. won. And then she got up and kept going, but uh, Micah power slams her on the ramp. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, it gave her that opportunity to recover is what that trip did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tam went over the top to the floor uh, or she went and she went to die, but like, no, so Tam was sent over the top to the floor by Micah. Uh, on the backdrop, she backdropped her over the top. Um, mm -hmm. That's where she kind of landed awkwardly, kind of hurting the thing. And Mike mm -hmm. goes for like a suicide dive, but she Tam didn't get up. She, she kind of just stopped for a couple seconds, then just rolled out of the ring to continue mm -hmm. that before. Like I think she was supposed to dive there, but with Tam not very smart up, decision though. 
E oh Jesus, yeah. Because she went, it was <laughs> interesting. Um, they're just in the ring, kicking each other in the face, like from a seated position. Great spot there. Um uh Tam hits a running knee in the ropes at one point into a backdrop driver into the inverted triangle, and then Tam's like gets the leg very Zack Saber Jr. ish, pulling it pulling at other limbs while holding a submission on. But uh Mike gets to the ropes. Um Tam spin it's a spin kick and goes running, but then uh Micah catches her, popping her up into a power bomb. Uh she goes for a slam, but she gets her onto her shoulders. Tam swings back, hitting almost like a half Destino. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I noticed that as well. I was like, wait, wait, what? Half Destino. Uh Micah yes. cuts Tam. Tam off up top with a delay, hits a delayed superplex and re- keeps rolling through su- suplexes in the ring. It was great. She finally gets mm-hmm. a two down. She gets that off the shoulder spin on slam, but again, only gets two. She goes up to the top, but Tam cuts her off, unload strike, but Micah stops the superplex and hits a super Zack driver or Michinoka driver, if you're nasty. Uh, Micah follows up with another Michinoka driver, but only gets two. Um, Micah goes for a suplex at one point, but Tam reverses it into a violent screwdriver. Or, sorry, violent. Or is it violent or violet screwdriver for two? If it's Tam, it's violet. If yeah. it's Mitch Clark, it's violent. Yeah, it's it's the uh, Stein, uh, the Steiner driver. It's it, it's what it is. Uh, Mike hits a follow away slam into uh, into a Tam. Hits a follow away slam. And then Tam comes back with a Tiger suplex for one. Then Micah hits the Lariat for one. Tam uh, hits, hits a kick. Uh, hits a kick. Hits a violet, another Violet screwdriver for one. Then Micah comes back with a Lariat for one. Tam spin kicks her in the head. Goes uh, Hits the up kick. And then the running knee to the face for two. Tam then picks her up. Hits the Twilight Dream, which is the hammerlock arm trap German. For the win, sadly. Yeah. Uh, this match. match was a... Yeah. Go ahead. Great match. I'm just pissed that Micah didn't win the title back here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and I mentioned this before uh, on the round table again with Boris and, and Matt. It made no sense to me. And I think I mentioned it also on Japanese dressing up late more. It made no sense to me to have someone who, and, and there's no other term for this. Tam Nakano got skunked in the Grand Prix. She's stinky. She didn't, you didn't get a single point. There was no credibility no nothing that gave you the opportunity at that world title let alone to defeat the person who defeated micah who again held the title in the weirdest transitional time for stardom this year and and made it again credible because you know julia leaving that was very sudden. All those women leaving, very sudden. You know, there was it was overshadowed. The whole thing with Rossi, very much overshadowed the beginning of Micah's title reign. She forced people to listen to her. And then having that showdown with Tora, that was a perfect way to have the title removed from her because you had such a powerhouse, dominant, unquestionable force in that Sukatora. Have Toro lose to the one person who showed that they were not capable or competent this year? Are you going to tell me she's going to have a road to redemption going through all the people that defeated her in the Grand Prix? Because if I if I faced her in the Grand Prix, I'm looking at her like, I got this. So Saeed deserves a title shot, right? Because Saeed beat her. Everybody who she beat, or everybody who beat her, sorry. Everybody. That's if I beat her, I'm looking at her like I'm next. And it, it, yeah, it just, and then to have the one person who had one of the most dominant showings in the Grand Prix 
lose to the person who had the worst, what does that tell you about the credibility of the people in this company? Mm -hmm. Like, it makes zero sense. This was terrible booking. Terrible booking. I skipped ahead too much. Hold, hold, hold on. I meant, I thought there was another picture there. So post-match, uh, Tam gets the mic. She does the whole, Mikey, you were tough. You were a big challenge. You were so hard. I want to, I'm happy in the champion still. So protect, keep protecting stardom in the belt. And she says, so I don't want you to come and challenge me again. Tam literally says, I don't want you to challenge me again. Because it was, it was very hard. So Micah responds with how uh, you beat me. Who I had on one on all the five star Grand, Grand Prix matches. Keep smiling. Um, and she says, "I got to fight you." Uh, she faced the Red Champion. Uh, but well, if you start whining and crying again, I'll come take that belt right away. So Nakano starts chasing Micah around the rings, and Micah dodges and gets out of there. Uh, she ends up leaving. Uh, Nakano gets back on the mic. She says hello to everyone in space and everyone in Osaka. Edion, uh, the undefeated champion has defended her title against the undefeated winner. She, technically, she is right. She never was beat for the title last year because she went, she lost it when she went out injured. So she is the undefeated champion, technically. Um, so, uh, and she defended her title against the undefeated winner. Uh, to begin the second chapter of Tamar Road, there's someone I need to fight, right? As she's looking at Suzu Suzuki, who is on commentary. It's you, Suzu Suzuki. Uh, that stupid gal. Damn, getting ballsy with people lately. Um, Suzuki gets in the ring. I'm trying to understand why, though. Because just because you have the world title, you got skunked in the last tournament. Suzu did better than you. So, so there's so many people who should not have done better than Tam Nakano in that tournament who did. Mm -hmm. Bruh. Yeah. yeah. Um, she says, I've been waiting for, for, I've been, I've kept you waiting for a year. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's do it. Because Suzu won last year's five star. She was supposed to challenge Tam Nakano, but Tam got hurt and it ended up being. Micah winning the tournament to get the shot, and it was Micah versus Suzu for the title, and Su and Micah ended up coming at the winner there. Where I think Suzu, if it, Tam never would have got hurt, it would have been Suzu <laughs> winning the belt from from Tam. I really feel like that would have been the way they were going. Uh, mm. Suzu says, "Tam, it's been a while since I saw your face up close, and you still look ugly. You've kept me waiting." So mean. Yeah, you've kept me waiting too long. Ever since you were absent, I have never forgotten that hateful look on your face. I really hated you. I just couldn't help uh, help it. Uh, you should be satisfied now. Uh, there will be no second chapter of Tamu Road. Uh, I will end everything for you so that you will have no regrets. And I will put this red belt around my waist so you guys can look forward to it. And Nekino says... I'll rip off all those fake eyelashes. <laughs> oh shit! She's the so picking. rude. Considering like it, she probably uses like extensions too, because those things don't come off. Oh, and oh! First, I saw Suzu's side profile of those lashes. Those are some lashes. Well, she pulls one off her eye or off her eyes and throws them at Tam. Yeah. Uh, but like the the stretch on that was not. Ugh. And then Tam takes them and sticks them onto the belt, like it yeah, was yeah. just the fuck. Uh, she gets the mic back. She <laughs> this says, is Thank how girls fight, Andre. Yeah, I know. Uh, Tam gets the the mic back as Susie leaves. Tam says, and Tam does her sign off for the whole. Let's go, Tam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed with this. I'm very disappointed yeah. with that belt right now. Because again, if this is supposed to be. To do, I'll be happier. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If it, no, I'm saying if it gets onto Suzu, I'll be happier. 
I mean, same. Yeah. Because why would you put the title on your weakest person? These tournaments are supposed to showcase the best of the best. It showed that Tam still has some work to do. So why is she sitting on top of the company right now? No idea. And I love me some Tam, but this this whole thing doesn't make sense. This feels this give is giving me Cena Roman Reigns vibes, you know, where if they just felt placed in the spot that they didn't necessarily earn and then eventually did earn it. I don't like those stories because I feel like something's being forced down my throat and I don't I want to like things organically or dislike things organically. When I'm being forced, I immediately dislike it. I yeah. dislike this situation. Yeah, I agree with you. It's naughty, not nice. Okada of the non Kazushka kind. Stop booking things. Please. You suck let, at it. Let Gato take over. Please. Like, bring even if Gato's got to bring his just terrible fashion footwear around, just let him fix things. Let Please. Dick Togo he does. Look it. I, I think Togo could do a better job. Come on. I mean, I, we're not going to say who I think could be like many a people could book that show better. Coriano should book this show. That Again, would probably awesome. book it better than Okada than not Kazuchika kind. I just think that would be awesome. I think it'd be awesome. Bring in Kazuchika, Kazuchika Okada. Bring in the Okada of the Kazuchika kind. I feel like he would uh, do better. He's too busy flipping people off and calling people bitch. And bitches. calling them bitch, yeah. yeah. Well, he fit right in. <laughs> right in. Uh, we are going to get out of here. Uh, it, 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 this has been long enough. You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk and our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre and Melville Wrestling Talk. You can also find us on our new audio home at A Plus Productions on Facebook. A Plus Productions. Check them out over there. A Plus Productions.com is where you can download the podcast or, and, and get the RSS feed to add it to your podcast catcher. It tries to make sure you give us a like on your podcast catcher of choice a plus productions.com uh, you can also check us out uh on uh, me and mel doing random shows over at uh, twitch.tv slash our local establishment and youtube.com slash at our local establishment as this comes out wednesday morning um we don't know when we're doing uh Mar uh marble talk because according to the schedule the show Agatha Along isn't supposed to come out until the evening of September 18th. So we can't do the show that night. So it looks like this show is probably going to happen this upcoming weekend, sometime on either Saturday or Sunday. Or if Ed decides to go on Friday, or as the guys go Friday night before or after uh, JWU on Friday, we'll see with, an, with a special guest. We don't know what's going on yet. So. We'll figure it all out. It'll come when it comes. Marvel Talk's coming. Agatha all along. We're going to talk about the entire series over there on our local establishment. One more shout out to our boy Mike Larab over at Backbreaker Radio Deal for simulcasting all of our shows. Thank you so very much. YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. You can find his live stuff over at twitch.tv slash Mike Larab where he does the AEW watch alongs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday. You could also find him. Uh, uh, doing the uh, uh, gaming stuff every other day of the week. My brain is not working this late at night uh, over there on Twitch. And then he replays the gaming content, youtube.com slash at backburger underscore gaming. We find content from him, Mr. Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, Mr. Rick Jules, and therefore he can guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. As we do, Melbourne, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow Melbourne, you can find her on the X thing at Collins Melbourne. You can find her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pastor on Blue Sky, at Melbourne Collins. You can also find her on our local establishment's programming, Japanese Wrestling Update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. If there is a pay per view, we're Typically going to be a little early just so that 
our post people can get on to their shows at an appropriate time but stay tuned to our socials to find out when those bad boys are coming out you can also find me on astral bizarre's youtube channel where we do our show ladies wrestling it's all about the ladies we have a show coming out very soon hopefully because we got pwi stuff to talk about that's crazy cupcake stuff happening in professional wrestling involving the ladies so we got to talk about that so stay tuned to our socials to find out when that is coming out if you're wanting to watch stardom wrestling we will leave a link in the description box down below it is stardom-world.com it is i don't remember what the yen cost is but it's only coming out to about 750 for me right now that's according to me because i'm the one who pays that one it's a great price to watch some amazing women's wrestling. Maybe avoid town stuff right now. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm, that's a lie. I enjoy Tam Nakano's wrestling. Watch her stuff, but begrudge her for holding the title right now. <sighs> Andre, my trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Again, just want to say thank y'all so very much for tuning in, whether it's on. Uh, Andre Mill Wrestling Talk, Back Brigadier, or New Home A Plus Productions. Thank you so very much. If you are listening on A Plus Productions, please go over there and like us on your uh, podcast catcher of choice. Check out the website, join the Facebook page, and actually tune in this coming Sunday as me and Melba will be on uh, the flagship show on Sunday, A Plus Wrestling, as we'll be doing a state of New Japan Pro Wrestling with Boris Roberto Aguilar. He's having us on because they did the state of TNA last week with. Uh, for, uh, again, some a dude from Slime Wrestling. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, and this week it'll be me and Mel talking uh, New Japan with uh, Boris uh, chatting all about what's going on with the company, the ups, the downs, and the what the heck is going on with the lack of star power. So check that out. And then also, please, if you are watching on the YouTubes, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, share us out to all your friends, family, and the, all the goth baddies out there. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't imagine how that sounded over audio. That being said, I am your Melba. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.